they look for that scapegoat. They look for that outlet um, for their rage and that outlet for their trauma. And the Republicans, I think, understood that this was going to happen. And so they laid that groundwork. They laid that critical race theory groundwork, which is a phrase I think they just embraced because it sounds bad. If you have no idea what it is, then you just hear critical. Oh, that's, you know, very negative. I don't like that so much. Race. Then everyone's like, ah, you know, you know, white people are like, ah, my God, you know, another conversation about racism. Here we go again. Theory sounds abstract. Sounds like something, you know, too complex for your children to be hearing in school. It hits all the sweet spots for them. It has nothing to do with what the phrase actually means. It has nothing to do with the vast body of academic literature behind it. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's true, that there is systemic racism within our institutions, and this should be studied. It should be examined. And, you know, a bonus for them, of course, is that if you stop examining this, then you stop examining voter suppression, and you stop looking at all these voter suppression laws that have been passed, and the fact that the Democrats have abandoned their plan to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. I mean, if they're still doing it, I sure the hell you know I haven't heard about it. They don't seem to be treating it with particular urgency. They are not, uh, to my knowledge, also getting rid of the filibuster so that this plan could be enacted. They too don't seem to care about winning over their base, about ensuring that it stays with them, about ensuring that people are able to vote and that when they vote, that their votes count. 